Picture this, the sun-soaked landscapes of the untamed west, where dust dances in the air and a sense of adventure rides the wind. In a world where the spirit of resilience meets the unforgiving embrace of nature, there exists a television series that galloped into our lives like a thundering stallion. It was 1967 when the High Chaparral first graced the screens, a show that wasn't just a story unfolding but a window into a realm where courage was as essential as water in the desert. As you cast your mind back to that initial encounter with the series, you might recall the feeling of anticipation, of not knowing what lay beyond the horizon of each episode. The rich tapestry of characters, each with their own dreams and struggles, walked into your living room and etched their stories into your heart. It was a rendezvous with history, a time-traveling experience that brought the Wild West to life right before your eyes. Now, allow yourself a moment of reflection on those memorable moments that the show gifted you. Was it the breathtaking landscapes that painted a canvas of the Arizona Territory? Or perhaps the indomitable spirit of the Cannon family, as they faced adversities with an unwavering resolve? It could have been the camaraderie, the laughter, the tears that flowed as freely as the winds that swept through the vast plains. But enough reminiscing, for it's time to saddle up and ride into the realm of fascinating tidbits about the High Chaparral. Did you know that the series was created by David Dorthort, the same visionary behind the iconic Bonanza? And here's a twist, despite the name suggesting a highland setting, the show was actually set in the lower Sonoran Desert. As you let these morsels of trivia settle, you realize that every bit of information adds another layer of appreciation to the show you've come to love. So, as we embark on this journey of rediscovery, fasten your seatbelt, or in this case, your spurs. Get ready to relive the magic that was the High Chaparral and uncover secrets that even the most devoted fans might have missed. For now, let's raise a toast to the spirit of the West and the tales it left behind. In the arid landscape of 1,967 seconds, the High Chaparral, a captivating tale unfolds amidst the backdrop of the rugged Arizona Territory. This classic Western TV series, created by David Dordort, paints a vivid picture of life on the Chaparral Ranch, showcasing the challenges faced by the Cannon family as they strive to forge a new future. But did you know that the term Chaparral itself draws from a rich history? Originating from the Spanish word Chaparro, signifying evergreen oak shrubland, this term finds its roots in the landscapes of California and the northern reaches of the Baja California Peninsula in Mexico. An evergreen oasis amid the arid surroundings, chaparrals harbor an array of resilient flora, shaping the environment that lends its name to the show. A nod to the endurance and tenacity of the characters it depicts, the high chaparral aptly captures the spirit of the land it portrays. Within the ensemble cast, Bob Hoy, who portrayed Joe Butler, stood out not only for his acting prowess, but also for an intriguing connection to his co-star, Don Collier. Hoy remarkably played the role of Collier's younger brother on screen, a feat made more intriguing by the fact that he was, in fact, one year older than Collier. This casting choice adds an unexpected layer of complexity to the sibling dynamic, further highlighting the actor's skill in bringing their characters to life. As we delve into the legacy of the High Chaparral, it's worth noting the intertwined cinematic universe that brought actors Roberto Contreras and Frank Silvera to the screen. Both had appearances in the Magnificent Seven film franchise, with Contreras taking on the role of a villager in the original movie, while Silvera portrayed Labero in Guns of the Magnificent Seven. Their presence adds a touch of continuity to the Western genre, bridging narratives across different mediums. In the heart of the Arizona wilderness, the High Chaparral not only transports viewers to an era of daring pioneers, but also weaves together a tapestry of connections, both historical and artistic. As the series continues to capture the imagination of audiences, its exploration of the challenges and triumphs of the Cannon family and the Chaparral Ranch remains a timeless testament to the enduring spirit of the West. The High Chaparral, the iconic TV series that graced the screens in 1967, holds more intrigue than meets the eye. Amidst the sweeping landscapes and gripping narratives, a lesser-known fact emerges. The assistant director for several episodes was none other than the offspring of the legendary actor, director Erich von Stroheim. This connection adds a layer of Hollywood heritage to the show's production, intertwining the talents of generations. But the intrigue doesn't end there. Some of the series' most captivating scenes were shot within the confines of Paramount Pictures Studios. Behind the illusion of the vast Arizona ranch, the magic of Hollywood craftsmanship shone through. 
The paramount lot became the canvas upon which the Western saga unfolded, proving that not all frontiers are bound by geographical reality. Though the High Chaparral concluded its run in 1971, its legacy persisted beyond its finale. The Cannon Ranch, a cornerstone of the show's setting, made a notable appearance in a 1973 episode of Gunsmoke, Matt's Love Story. In an unexpected crossover, the familiar sight of the Cannon House and Ranch found a new home in a different narrative. This subtle nod to continuity reminded viewers that the tales of the West are interwoven in ways unseen. As the dust settles on the legacy of the High Chaparral, its hidden ties to Hollywood royalty and the artistry of Paramount Studios stand as testament to the multifaceted nature of television history. From Von Stroheim's lineage to Paramount's sound stages, the show's allure goes beyond the visible horizon, beckoning us to explore the complexities woven into every scene. So, for those who seek a glimpse into the past, a visit to the High Chaparral not only uncovers a gripping Western tale, but also unravels the threads that bind Hollywood's storied tapestry. Through the lens of Von Stroheim's descendant and the stages of Paramount Pictures, the show's impact resonates far beyond its final credits. For those keen enough to look, the past and present entwine in unexpected ways, etching a legacy that reaches beyond the confines of a television screen. Step into the world of the High Chaparral and discover the untold stories that reside within. David Rose's melodic touch, unveiling the harmonious link between the High Chaparral and Bonanza in the vibrant realm of television classics. The year 1967 ushered in a Western gem that would grace our screens with its rugged charm and gripping narratives. The High Chaparral. Amid the sprawling landscapes of the Arizona Territory, this series captured the essence of frontier life and familial bonds. Yet, beyond the iconic theme song and memorable characters, a melodic connection binds it to another renowned show of the era. David Rose, the maestro behind many unforgettable tunes, wove his musical magic into the High Chaparral's opening theme. But here's the intriguing twist, the composition wasn't entirely new. Rose ingeniously repurposed his score from an episode of Bonanza, another celebrated Western series. It was in the fifth season's episode titled The Pressure Game that the melodic seeds were sown. With a deft touch, Rose transformed this theme into the evocative strains that accompanied the iconic visuals of the High Chaparral. A confluence of creativity and adaptation, Rose's melodic ingenuity bridges two popular shows, adding an unexpected layer of connection for aficionados of classic TV. As we immerse ourselves in the stories of the Cannon family and their adventures in the Arizona desert, let us also take a moment to appreciate the harmonious thread that links these two beloved series, reminding us of the interconnected tapestry of television history. The High Chaparral, the iconic 1967 TV series that captured the essence of the Old West, found its way onto screens with a touch of Paramount Pictures Studios' magic. The show's creators chose the storied backdrop to bring the Cannon Ranch to life, a sprawling emblem of the American frontier. As viewers tuned in week after week, they were treated to the rugged beauty of the ranch landscapes, a testament to the artistry of Paramount sound stages. One name that stood out in the credits was that of the assistant director, a figure whose lineage traced back to the legendary director Erich von Stroheim. This connection added a layer of cinematic heritage to the show, a fitting tribute to a man who had left an indelible mark on the world of filmmaking. As the episodes unfolded, this familial link seemed to infuse a certain flair into the direction, a subtle nod to the past while crafting a new Western narrative. Beyond its final episode in 1971, the High Chaparral continued to leave its mark. In 1973 Seconds Gunsmoke, Matt's love story, a familiar setting emerged once again, the Cannon Ranch. Recognizable shots of the iconic Cannon House and Ranch brought a wave of nostalgia, a testament to the lasting impact of the show. As the saga of the High Chaparral lives on, its spirit remains etched in the annals of television history. In the realm of television, few shows manage to intertwine history, legacy, and storytelling as deftly as the High Chaparral. Its connection to Paramount Pictures Studios and the lineage of its assistant director speak to its enduring significance. And while the series may have ended in 1971, its echoes reverberate through time, leaving an indelible mark on the Western genre. David Rose, the renowned composer behind the iconic theme of the High Chaparral, found his inspiration in an unexpected place, the dusty trails of another Western classic. 
Having previously composed for Bonanza, Rose ingeniously repurposed his own work from the fifth season's episode titled The Pressure Game. This adaptation birthed the memorable melody that would become synonymous with the High Chaparral. A harmonious connection between two Western worlds, the theme captured the essence of the show's frontier spirit, drawing viewers deeper into the Arizona Territory's rugged tales. While the ensemble cast brought life to the Cannon family's trials and triumphs on screen, an intriguing dynamic existed behind the scenes. Bob Hoy, portraying the role of Joe Butler, happened to play the younger brother of Don Collier's character Buck Cannon. Curiously, Hoy's real-life age betrayed this familial hierarchy, as he held a seniority of one year over Collier. This casting choice added a layer of complexity to the on-screen relationship, blurring the lines between reality and fiction in the sprawling landscape of the High Chaparral Ranch. Amidst the choreography of camera angles and directorial cues, an unsung figure stood in the shadows, a certain assistant director, whose lineage linked him to the realm of legends. The son of none other than the illustrious actor and director Erich von Stroheim, this behind-the-scenes visionary lent his expertise to the show's production. Through his keen eye and lineage, he channeled a touch of cinematic history into the narrative of the High Chaparral, orchestrating the convergence of past and present in each episode's unfolding drama. In the vast expanse of the Arizona desert, where fictional narratives and real-life intricacies intertwined, the High Chaparral rode the western wave of 1967 television. With its multifaceted melodies, age-defying casting, and a nod to Hollywood lineage, the show showcased that the wild frontiers of both storytelling and history could be found not only on screen but behind the scenes as well. As the sun sets on the rugged landscapes of the High Chaparral, it's not just a TV series that bids us farewell, but a time capsule of emotions, connections, and untamed adventures. This show, with its sweeping vistas and unforgettable characters, has etched itself into the annals of television history and left an indelible mark on our hearts. Whether you rode alongside the Cannon family through their triumphs and trials, or found solace in the camaraderie of Buck, Manolito, and Blue, the High Chaparral wasn't merely a show, it was a journey. A journey that took us beyond the confines of our screens and into a world where loyalty, courage, and the unbreakable bonds of family were tested against the backdrop of the untamed Wild West. Each episode was a reminder that life's challenges might change, but the values that ground us remain steadfast. The intricate tales woven into the fabric of this series were more than entertainment. They were reflections of our own struggles, victories, and moments of introspection. As you reminisce about your own connection with the High Chaparral, I encourage you to share your cherished memories and thoughts. Let the echoes of laughter, heartache, and triumph resound as you recount the moments that have stayed with you, as vivid as the Arizona sunsets that graced our screens. Thank you for allowing the spirit of the High Chaparral to live on within you, a testament to the power of storytelling and its ability to bridge the gaps between generations. Your time and interest in this timeless series are truly appreciated. So, as we bid adieu to the windswept plains and trails of the past, let us carry the legacy of the High Chaparral forward, a legacy of camaraderie, adventure, and the enduring pursuit of a life worth living. Stay ever connected to those cherished memories, and remember, the spirit of the High Chaparral lives on within us all.